Bonjour, this is Jasmine. Thank you guys so much for stopping and smell the roses on Rue, madame. I know it's been a long time. I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a really long time, but I'm here. I mentioned to you guys that my birthday is in seven days. That was a day ago, so it's six days now. Um, how do I feel? Oh, I feel old. No, I'm joking. Um, no, I'm not joking, but I'm okay. <laughs> um, to be frank, to be quite frank, I have been in and out of emotions. Like I have a bit of pandemic fatigue. I have motherhood woes. I'm PMSing. <laughs> I'm just got a bit of cabin fever. I'm just a lot of static and compression and um, trying to be in good spirits. Despite all of that chaotic, we're still in partial lockdown. We still have the curfew at 7 p.m. So all of these things, it's like, ugh, lately I have been blah. I'm not going to even lie. I've been blah. I have been wanting to do a lot. But since my birthday is fast approaching, I'm trying to boost myself. Um, so hopefully everyone is doing well and in good health. Um, wishing everyone the best. And hopefully everyone will eventually um, break out of their pandemic routines and get back to some version of normal. And I feel like that needs to come faster. Um, anyways, I wanted to talk to you guys, but because I've been online and just something immediately came to my attention. Um, some news, I guess, um, in the Twitter universe about a Black Lives Matter founder. And I'm like, what's this about now? Even though there's a lot been going on, I don't know why this stuck out to me because you had, um, what's his name? Prince somebody died in England? Philip? Prince Charles? I don't know. Somebody died in, which was news. <laughs> and then DMX. That actually touched me. DMX. A lot of people, rightfully so, were you know, sending their condolences to this rap legend. And I'm not really into rap like that anymore, maybe in my teens or early 20s, but now I'm not really a music person per se. But, you know, I have my Megans and my Cash Dolls that I, you know, keep up with. <laughs> However, but, you know, the 90s hip-hop R&B just can't be matched. Maybe it's just a generational thing too. Maybe it's just a little bias, a little. But um, yeah, that was news. So condolences to DMX, his family. He has a very um, undeniable record of hits. And um, yeah, and it's just really refreshing to see how people appreciated him while he was here. He was given his flowers. He struggled with addiction and drug use throughout his life and I actually feel feel for him and I'm glad that he has transitioned so yeah let's get that out of the way but yeah there's been news and I really can't keep track of everything but yeah this thing about the Black Lives Matter founder Parissa She's on one of the t-shirts that is on the Rue Madame blog as one of the freedom fighters. So yeah, that's why I, I took note of this non-story as well. But I was like, okay, so what is the deal? What's the drama about of them, you know, talking about this person? And I found out that this woman bought a house. That's it. She bought a house. 
that's where the drama lies. Um, no, but it was a, a 1.4, I think 1.4 million dollar house. And that's why people were getting all in a, you know, in a, in a fit of like, oh, the audacity of it all. Um, but I guess if you were to look at the optics, it's all about PR at the end of the day anyway. And this reminds me of the Jack, Derek Jackson and the Kirk Franklin debacle. PR, like PR, it just looks bad. And I get that, but this is probably the, it's not an, it's the non-story. I mean, the part I get where people may be outra outraged about is the fact that Black Lives Matter or the movement for Black Lives Matter for Black Lives, I think they changed or altered the name. Um, it's supposed to be a nonprofit, it's supposed to be grassroots, and she's buying a million dollar house. I get it. I really do get it. And it's just the PR. <laughs> the PR is just optics. If you're going to be in the spotlight, if you're going to be in the public eye, optics has to be a part of your game, a, a part of the business, a part of the movement. So I do understand that part. I get it. Like, yeah, but that's very, very, very minimal to like problems, real problems. You know what I mean? Um, and they were also talking about how this co-founder of BLM um, chose a predominantly white neighborhood in Los Angeles, which again, optics, I get it. Ugh, touchy. But um, yeah, but that doesn't, it doesn't change her stance of not wanting law enforcement to kill black people. I don't think, <laughs> I think her job, she can still do her job and live in a $1.4 million house. She, she could probably do her job better to be in a safe comfortable situation that she's earned <laughs> she's earned her place um she earned her money she probably has books and you know works very hard at her job and she does have to live um i just think people assume you're doing noble work for the people also give me um but and you can't also live well you know what I mean? Like, I don't also like the assumption that black people have to continue to suffer. I'm talking about black suffering. I just did a video talking about the book I just read for the Ramadan book club of just the, uh, the constant ceaseless black suffering and how, you know, you know, people, black people, rich or poor, Black Lives Matter founder or not want to live well. They want to live and they want to benefit from the fruits of their labors too. There's nothing wrong with that. She can still be, she's a, a self-proclaimed communist, I think, and a socialist and all of these ideal titles. And you can still do that and live well. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the optics is bad. I get it. But Wow. Wow. Anyways, um, that's all I have to say about that. Really quick, my two cents. Uh, check out the blog. Check out the Room Madame shop. And like, share, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.